If you've ever wondered why anybody would want to buy and own land in the Cornucopius metaverse, this video is going to be breaking down the pages of the Copy Wiki page that explain that value proposition in extraordinary detail. Let's talk about it. Welcome Lake M Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. If you haven't heard already, I've got a brand new YouTube channel over at Gamble Gaming, and I'll link that down in the description below. It may not have anything on it quite yet, but it is where I expect all of my cornucopious gameplay footage to go in conjunction with my role as one of the leaders of the Knights Guild. That channel is going to be much more focused on the gameplay aspects of Cornucopius, as well as occasionally some other games and maybe some tech-related content too, to be more open and friendly to non-Web3 gamers. If you're interested in that kind of content, like I said, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Feel free to subscribe. This has been an episode of the CopyWiki Breakdown series that I've got going on on this channel that I've been looking forward to doing for quite some time, but it's, it's such a big topic that I thought it might be kind of difficult to cover in just one video. About a month ago, I did a video on the Cornucopius in-game economy that I would suggest you go check out or re-watch to refresh yourself on the context behind the real-world value that exists behind these digital assets that we're going to go ahead and break down right now. This short page on seasons in the Kopi Wiki page reveals a lot about the game while saying very little. In just a few really short sentences, we learn about the entire core framework of one of the major parts of the Cornucopius gameplay that will exist alongside things like racing and PvP and social aspects of the game. Across each of the themed zones where you can own land plots that you can build on and farm on and produce resources on, time is going to be broken down into quarterly seasons that will have their own seasonal leaderboards attached to them that will basically facilitate some of the main competitive elements of the game. Each of these in-game seasons will reflect the climate conditions of the real world that we see in spring, summer, autumn, and winter. So not only will players be competing against each other by accumulating points in the various ways that that'll manifest itself, but players will also have to adapt to the changing conditions of each season in the game. This right here is one of the main ways that this game is going to stay new and interesting because the game is going to be constantly evolving, especially as new themed zones get released throughout the year. In the current roadmap for themed zones, there are 12 themed zones that are planned in the long-term future of the Cornucopius metaverse, and each of these different zones will have different conditions, different resources, and different game mechanics that react differently to the seasonal changes that are going to come about. In the beginning, we're just going to have three zones that are available, but as the game evolves and grows over time, there will be more zones that are available, and over time, more sectors that are available within those zones, so that new districts can pop up and enter district competitions, but we'll get to that part in a second. Even the different sectors within the various themed zones might have different conditions that you'll have to adapt to if you own land within that sector. So even if you're in a zone that might be known for its access to fertile soil, you probably won't be doing a lot of farming on your land if the sector that your land is placed on is kind of a a mountainous region that's kind of rocky and not really ideal to grow crops on. The way that this section is worded makes me think that certain sectors are going to be defined by the geographical location that might optimize certain kinds of production over others, which makes sense when you think about relative fairness. If each of these districts are going to be competing with each other, in district competitions. If you want to get a better feel for how each zone is characterized and what you can expect to find, 
I would recommend going to check out the Kopi Wiki page at whatever time that you are watching this video because it will be updated and evolve over time as this game evolves. So whenever you decide to read that content, you'll have access to information that I might not currently have access to now at the time of recording this video. Okay, so quick big picture breakdown here. We're gonna zoom in and then we're gonna zoom way out. Land owners will own land plots within geographical locations called sectors. And each of the 12 zones will be comprised of about four or more sectors. So we're talking about a lot of different districts here that will have to work together as a team in order to move their collective district up on the leaderboard during seasonal competitions. The way that you join a district as a contributing team member is to either own a plot of land within that given district or you join as a citizen of that district under somebody that owns a plot of land that has a room to rent. I would say that this is half of the value proposition of owning a plot of land because if you own land, you are a gatekeeper for who gets to contribute to a given district as a citizen and reap the rewards that would come as a result of performing in that district. Fair warning for players though, you don't get district rewards just by virtue of being a citizen of that district. Citizenship will give you exclusive access to quests that are available in that district and it'll give you additional play and earn opportunities. But even if your district manages to make it to first place in that season's district competition, you do not get rewards if you didn't contribute anything to the points that were accumulated that season. You will receive rewards proportional to the amount that you contribute. What I think is one of the most interesting gameplay mechanics of the Cornucopius metaverse that really is going to separate itself from the rest of the industry, both on the Web3 side and on the traditional gaming side, and that mechanic is the influence spear. Land plots, not districts or sectors, but individual land plots will be able to earn a sort of safety zone around their plot by generating more in-game activity. And that safety zone will protect them from player versus player attacks or NPC attacks or general random natural disasters. This would effectively make land clusters more desirable if they have collaborative forces behind them. Have I recommended joining a Cornucopius guild before? I'm not totally sure. You might have to go back and rewatch my other Cornucopius videos just to confirm. Here's where I think Cornucopius implements some elements into the game that protects the integrity of it so that it's not like a, a pay to win type of game. You could, in theory, buy the biggest lands and the biggest buildings to try to create the biggest mega districts that the game has ever seen. However, keep in mind that you will run the risk of overextending yourself if you cannot keep up with the maintenance costs that could result in buildings being destroyed if you don't keep up with them. It sounds like a very small and simple gameplay mechanic, but in reality, it adds a very deep layer of strategy and complexity that puts this game on a whole different level. There are consequences to expanding too big too fast, which means that you have to pay attention to in-game markets to determine if certain industries, like maybe the hotel industry, is an oversaturated business in your district. Because if you're not making enough from your land to cover the upkeep of the structures, then you may have to spend more time just earning the in-game currency in order to keep up with the structures that already aren't making enough money for you. I may have said this before in a different video, probably in a different context, but consequences 
are an important part of any healthy economy, and Cornucopius is really implementing those things in really unique and interesting ways. Here's where the other half of that value proposition for owning land in the Cornucopius metaverse comes in. Actually, this may very well be the primary value proposition of owning land. Just owning land in the Cornucopius metaverse is not going to be enough to make your land valuable. Even if you have land in the perfect location, in the highest scoring district that produces the most valuable resources in the game, your land isn't really going to be very valuable if you haven't done anything to work on it and develop it. At the very beginning of the game, only land plot owners are going to be able to work on their own land. But even if you're able to build up your land to that minimum level that allows other players to come in and collaborate on building up that land with you, it still probably isn't going to be enough to produce the valuable resources that a very high level of land is going to be able to produce. I know that a lot of my viewers that watch all of my Cornucopius content are already a part of one of the major guilds in the community, but for those of you that are trying to go at it as an individual, just know that the way that Cornucopius is designing it is around community, it's around teamwork, and it's around collaboration. So while you might be working on your own land with one set of individual hands, the guilds are going to be out there with a hundred sets of hands that are working on different plots of land that are leveling it up far faster than you ever would as an individual. So I urge you again, join a guild. So as we discussed, there is going to be risk involved in building too much on your land. But on the flip side of that, underdeveloped land is going to be outpaced by land that is developed. As funny as it is to say, your land is going to be more valuable the more friends you have in the community, which is fascinating, and I'm looking forward to it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.